welcome to another episode of Chronicles of a Kenyan Biker, Chronicles of a Kenyan Cyclist, and Chronicles of a, I guess, a triathlete. Yeah, because that's what I've been doing. I've been up to quite a bit. Life caught up to me and getting time to film or shoot and then edit and do all that stuff. Be a husband, be a parent. Uh, it's been it's been it's been difficult but anyway i am here got a chance to film an episode and to be honest there has been quite a lot that has been happening in those three areas uh man but mostly the motorcycling world my goodness gracious yo that incident that occurred on forest road or wangari maithai road or whatever you want to call it it was just deplorable whatever way you want to look at it but we are not going to talk about that today because that is a touchy subject and it has a lot of controversy but just yo whatever happened dude that was just messed up on so many levels and i wish it would never happen and it shouldn't have happened to anybody man woman whatever you identify yourself as it should never happen sexual assault of any form to anybody is absolutely wrong and yeah i hope the perpetrator gets what he deserves but then the worst thing about it is that throwing the entire industry under the bus for that particular incident was not particularly fair. And the whole repercussions that occurred was just on another level. Yo, as in I was afraid of riding my motorbike anywhere because I would be nabbed and have to pay a 35000 fine. But anyway, again, I said I'm not going to talk about this. This is just going to be a snippet of what has been happening, I guess, my take. Uh, maybe we can start with the latest one. Which is unfortunately something I said I won't talk about, but it's as, as a result of um, what happened. Right now, NTSA rolled out um, some registration thing whereby if you want to register as a picky picky owner, I can't remember the exact details. You just go to a Huduma Center, an ID card, carry pin, um, and then yourself in person, and then boom, it speeds you up to be. A border, a registered border rider. In other words, uh, you notice out of that criteria, it doesn't have any proof of training, formal training, proper training. Let's call it proper training because even let's, if you focus, if you rather look at the expose that was done by BBCI on the driving schools and all that way, but you can just walk in pretty much buy your license and... Um, yeah, that's not even a requirement. Even buying a license is not a requirement. So the requirement is, is just you having a, an, a proof of, I guess, being a Kenyan and um, no ownership of a motorcycle required. And even its, 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 its level of um, safety on the road. No even safety apparel. No training whatsoever. You can be a Buddha Buddha ride. Like that's the, that's the solution. That's the solution to the problem we have. Like <laughs> uh, day in, day out, every single time we... I operate, there is most likely a border border guy on our, on our table. And uh, it's just quite unfortunate that this is the... <laughs> it's actually laughable. Like, it's like if you are caught um, having done fraud, you are taken to court and then told, you know, look, license yourself for doing fraud, for fraudulent activity. Then here, here's a license for it. <laughs> but anyway... <sighs> Uh, it's just sad. It's just sad. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, aside from that, yeah, um, yes, I became a triathlete. Yes, uh, swim, ride, and running, which is fun, by the way. It's extremely enjoyable. You don't have to be a champion to enjoy it, but it pushes you to a whole new level of enjoyment, and I encourage people to try it out. And so if you need to get some information about triathlons and all that, there is Kenyan triathlon.org. There are two websites, which I find very strange. But it might be something to do with a little birdie in, in the industry told me about it. It's a bit dodgy, but I, <laughs> I don't have evidence for that, so I'm not going to comment. But if you want to be a triathlete or participate in some of these events, um, you can just go on kenyantriathlon.com and do it. Yeah. That's something interesting. They recently concluded Commonwealth and Youth Africa Games qualifiers just happened. I think it was about two weeks ago. We participated and it was so much fun. I enjoyed every minute of it. I crossed the line. I was on last. I was on last, guys. I was on last. But I was almost disqualified from the get-go for the bike I had. I brought in my newly built triathlon bike and they were like, um, because of the corners, you can't use the TT bars, but the thing is integrated. So I'm like, yo, I was there for the race briefing. Why wasn't this mentioned? 
So they told me, no, you know what? You can't call it. You wouldn't be able to qualify if you do. And I was like, yo, dude, I already announced that I'm part of that group of others. <laughs> we are here to, you know, fill the space and enjoy ourselves. We're the ones who are smiling at the end of the race when we don't win. But just accepting that finisher medal, which is which is so satisfying, by the way. Um, also in the cycling news is a big news that they've integrated every event in the year's calendar. So everybody has come together. You name it, if you know some of these crews like Team Velonos. Um, uh, whatever, Bike Tribe, um, Giant Bikes, and all these organizers for racing events. It's quite unfortunate, I don't know most of the names. I end up finding out the day of the event, but I just love participating. And I encourage you guys to do it. You don't have to win to give you a reason to participate. Yeah, you, you, you always leave those, 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 champs, those champs. They're always the champs. Always. Everybody can't be number one. We all can't fit on that podium. It's usually small. It's, it's tiny. It's like the size of my desk. <laughs> or the number of brain cells I've lost recording this, but anyway, um, that's a small number, oh, not bad, I should increase those figures, anyway, yeah, so, if, again, I encourage you guys to participate, join up, and also, that just leads us up to the fuel prices, guys, come on, what's gonna make you dump the car once or twice a week and then just jump on a bicycle or n another form of non-motorized transport, yeah, I'm, I'm being inclusive of hand carts, I mean, sorry, not hand carts, yeah, it'll be very interesting if you're a CEO and you're being pulled. No, it actually will be humbling if you do so. But anyway, I digress. What will make you guys to just get off the car seat and um, jump on non-motorized transport um, as a way of commuting? As the fuel prices are 137, my goodness gracious. And I think Africans or Kenyans love big engine cars. Like the V8s and the VXs just keep increasing. Maybe, maybe it's something to do with the elections. Maybe in August. I know, but I particularly find it um, quite unfortunate that we pride ourselves in the big cars and you find just one person inside it. And you can do quite a lot and uh, by exercising alongside commuting to work, which is a great. You feel alive. Like every time, every guy, everybody who does it, who is taking it up, feels alive when they get work. And don't worry about the sweat and anything. You get used to it. Wet wipes. And nice deodorant <laughs> and a change of clothes yeah so yo guys come on let's kind of work and save the planet by doing your part by not using motorized transport i'm saying motorized transport. yeah i'm a commuter on a motorbike and um yeah I, I normally dump it i think three times a week i have um successfully done i think almost a month without driving anywhere which is good i enjoy it i've even incorporated running to work. So if you can run to work or walk to work, that'll be fantastic. Uh, yeah, dump the vehicle. Uh, we are not yet there on the electric vehicles, but they're making uh, an entry. I think one of the biggest sellers is the Nissan Leaf, but it is ugly as hell. And I think the people who drive it are taxi drivers and they just drive them like absolute crap. Hybrids upside disappearing. Yeah, side disappearing. Maybe the high-end vehicles, the Mercs and all that. But the other... Japanese models, I'm not seeing them much on the road. Maybe the Athlete Crown, which is a big ass engine in the first place. I think it has a 3.4, and then together with the hybrids, so it's a big engine. So it kind of negates the point. But anyway, I don't know how it works, so I'm not going to comment. Um, so, yeah, that just goes to show you that you can jump on a non motorized transport to get wherever you want to go. Yep. It'll be cool. Integrated. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And you're doing your part to save the planet. We only have one planet. Let's take care of it. So what else in this snippet type of video? Mm -hmm. Yes, with regards to part one of this um, pretty much of a tirade kind of, <laughs> which is meant to be a snippet, you should check out Wamuyu's video on that whole NTSA thing if you're in the motorcycle world. Um, I'm trying to be inclusive to everybody else. Yeah, if you, you should check it out. And her take, it's, it's more frustration. I like her passion out of it. And yeah, and then also go check out the website if you're a motorcyclist and get the facts right. Um, the reason why I'm also not doing a whole take on it is because I need to investigate more. But the information is a bit wanting even when you go on the website, which kind of sucks. And just brings up a lot of speculation and assumptions, which just muddies the water quite a lot. So which I don't like. I don't like muddy water. I like clear water. Except the sun. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so... What else? What else? Oh yeah, I think I think I think I'm done talking on this snippet type of video. Um, we probably will leave you with some footage of Nathan. Nathan is a fantastic and is a is a is a seasoned rider. 
Uh, he rides um two bikes. He's one of those uh, upper class bikers who rides two bikes. <laughs> I'm joking, but he's he's a very good rider, and he sent me a piece of footage. Actually, he sent me twice. Uh, one of which will include in the anatomy of incident type of videos. I know this one falls under that category, but this is going to be kind of um uncut diaries ish anatomy of incidents because I'm not analyzing any incidents today. Even though I have a bunch of them, like today morning, some dingus in a big car tried to run me off the road and then notice the camera and then apologize suddenly it's like you didn't realize that i'm a human being but when you saw the camera that is going to embarrass you your cognitive dissonance just clicked in and you're like oh my goodness i could have hit this guy and actually if i hit him i would have been on camera no 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 your your, your thinking process is all wrong <laughs> But anyway, that's another thing. So back to Nathan. I, Jesus Christ, I digress. I'm dropping brain cells like things that are easily dropped. Marbles. Yeah. 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 So Nathan sent me a footage of him slicing through traffic. And I was quite impressed. Scooters are fantastic commuter motorbikes. They first sip a little water, have plenty of luggage space. I think one time he bragged in the group about him being able to do the house shopping with a scooter. I'm like, damn. I can only buy like what something that can fit in my pocket. Yeah, I tried hanging something on the handlebar, paper bag, and I was like, damn, I almost fell so many times. But anyway, yeah, scooters are fantastic to navigate through traffic. They are nice and manageable, which is cool. So that's a big shout out to Nathan for that footage he sent me of um, him slicing through traffic. So I guess that is it for me. That's my phone ringing, and I forgot the rules of filming is that you turn off your phone but i i'm not sure who's who's calling me but anyway that's it for me we're working on the next episode of um uncut diaries um and i think this time we might be featuring the whole uh, road cycling scene which is also enjoyable it's nice and fast um build endurance and you look good in lycra yeah yeah <laughs> And anyway, I digress once more. If I had a Kenyan shilling for every time I digress, I would probably have like eight Kenyan shillings by the end of this video. But anyway, that's it for me. Big shout out to our number one fan, Julio. There's some merch coming your way. And uh, we, we're going to choose what we're going to give you for merch. Um, I have this twist tie right here. Um, Yeah, it's a nice twist tie. Uh, because we don't get any funding and um, YouTube algorithm is against us because I don't put out a lot of stuff all the time. So I, I, I don't have much. So I can give you this twist tie. It's good for uh, temporarily binding things together. Yeah. And then you can make shapes. You can make shapes with it. So Julio, we're shipping this out to you. <laughs> Peace, guys. Have a good one. forgot i also attended an art exhibition by one boy kamiru um i think it was called all my venus days at the tear studios and it was fantastic uh, 
by definition, art is anything that causes an emotion reaction, and this one definitely did. It was very private, and she was letting us into a private life, and it was very emotive, very emotive, lots of feelings. Watch out for our next one. Big shout out to one boy. Anyway, that's it for me. I swear this is the last part in short. I swear this is the last one. <laughs> Please be good people.